Now, Jackie, what I'd like to ask you is, why did Fianna Fáil do a U-turn on the water charges? Why did Fianna Fáil say in their manifesto before they got elected that they would abolish Irish water and bring uh, the, it back under the control of the local county councils? What we said in the manifesto was that I, we would get rid of water charges. That has been achieved. Uh, we're not in government, I suppose is the first thing to say. And in the programme for government, we insisted that, uh, that water charges would have to go. And um, 12 months on from that agreement, we have achieved what we set out to achieve. But if, if uh, you are going to charge for excessive use, then you are bringing water charges in through the back door which will lead to privatisation further down the road? No, I don't agree with either of those statements. First of all, water is a valuable resource. I think everyone will accept that. If someone is wasting water, I think they should be penalised. It's too valuable a resource to be let um, go unchecked and have people. And the, the allowances that have been built into this are 70% above the average usage. So I think the allowances are more than uh, adequate for the vast majority of households. They make a 92% of households will, uh, will, have, will have no penalty uh, applied to them. And even if a household is being penalised, they're going to get the opportunity to rectify the problem that's causing the waste. So I think in, in that case, this is, it, this is very fair and, and, very, and very reasonable. Um, what was the second part of the question, I'm sorry? I said, do you not think that uh, this is bringing in privatisation further sorry. down the road, that, no. that by, by introducing uh, charges for excessive Pat usage, Pat that further down the road you're, you're, you're opening up the gateway to privatisation? No, part of the recommendation is going to come before Dahl here in the next couple of weeks is to enshrine it in the constitution that Irish water will stay in public ownership. So the idea of Irish water being privatised is going to be put to bed once and for all. But what about your manifesto before you before the election saying that um, you were going to abolish Irish water? Um, where does Fianna Fáil stand now on abolishing Irish water? Well, obviously when we're in government we'll examine how Irish water is functioning. But I think the principal thing in our manifesto was that we, we said we'd do away with water charges. We have managed to deliver on that even though they were not in government. We have forced the government and Fine Gael's policy was to maintain water charges. But, but your so, manifesto was to abolish uh, water charges and if you're charging for excessive use then you're not abolishing... Uh, I, I'd be very happy knocking on doors to say that water charges are gone. Only people who... there will be penalties for people who uh, use water excessively. But those which they reckon would be 8% of households, those will be given an opportunity to rectify the excessive use. And the allowance that's there is 70% over the average usage. So I think you know that's, that's more than adequate and can be defended uh, in, in, in any sphere. And I think another important thing that we've ensured is that both urban and rural dwellers will, will, get, will get equal funding under this and that rural water schemes or community water schemes or some of them operate in villages as well will be catered for will be catered for under this new regime and I think that would bring fairness to the whole water structure and um, I'm happy that what we said in, in our manifesto uh, that we have stood steadfastly to and that water charges won't be on the won't be But if you're charging for excessive water use then we do have water charges and, and it is, uh, a, you know, look, we've had battles in this country year, in years gone by where they tried to bring in water charges before, and each time the people won. Now, this latest attempt to bring in water charges, I don't think the government were expecting the backlash uh, from, from the people, but we as people have spoke, and this is a democracy, and the people have made it quite clear, and they made it quite clear in the last general election, that we do, will not tolerate water charges under any circumstances, whether it be through excessive use or charges the way that they were hoping to bring in charges. Um, are you aware, Jackie, that there's a campaign at the moment for, for meter fairies going around the country taking out meters? Um, how are... Uh, Irish water going to bill people that have no meter put in. Well, as as regards the you know the people who are using water excessively, um, as I said, Shimon, water is an extremely valuable resource. I think the vast majority of people will want that to be used sensibly, and um, if there's a penalty there for people who are using virtually seventy percent over the average, and as I said, they would be given the opportunity if there is a league or whatever to rectify that before any penalty will apply. So I think this. 
this proposal that have been brought forward are fair and reasonable. And I think the vast majority of people will see, will see it as such and people will not be getting water bills through their letterbox and I think the citizens of the country will be happy that Fianna Fáil delivered for the citizens. Do you realise that even the bills that come in for excessive uh, usage, do you realise that there will be a, a boycott? The boycott is continuing. I mean, not only, not only is the boycott continuing, but now the game has been, the ante has been upped because there are people going around removing meters, Jackie. Firstly, that as far as I'm concerned, water charges for the vast majority of households would not apply. Um, anyone who is um, using very excessive water will get, will get a bill, but they will get the opportunity to assess why their usage is so high and if they rectify it, the bill will be nullified. The second point I want to make is that it's going to be put into legislation that Irish water cannot be privatised. And I think you know that will come to a referendum of the people and undoubtedly that will, that will be passed. And the third point is that people on community schemes are going to get equal treatment. So I think we're bringing a, a, a serious fairness to the whole water regime. It has dominated, I suppose, the political landscape for the last number of years. And I think what has come out of the Water Commission now will put it to bed. And I think the vast majority of people will see that there's a, a fair conclusion to this whole water saga. Okay, Jackie, do you believe in democracy? Of course. And do you believe that if the people have spoken and said that this is what we want, then the government should listen to the people? Yeah, but and I, so, so I'm going to disagree on this point. I feel that what has come out of the Water Commission will satisfy the vast majority of people in this country. You see, I don't, because I think that um, people aren't stupid. I think that a lot of people realise that uh, this is all leading to privatisation. And I don't think you can fool people anymore. And with no, social just, media, no, uh, just, the just, information is out but, there and but, people but are seeing the information. On the privatisation, there's a clear recommendation from this commission that there's going to be legislation put before the dog that will go to a referendum about the people okay. to enshrine so, in the constitution. So, Jackie, under EU law, uh, Irish water uh, has to have um, be open to competition six years within setting up. Well, if so that means that other utility companies that, that deal with water can come in here and get hold of the water and sell us back our own water. Well, Under EU law, as a company, Irish Water was set up as a private company. Yeah? yeah. So un, under EU law, private companies, one company cannot dominate the market. The market has to be open to competition. So where 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 does that stand now? Well, the recommendation, I suppose, the EU, there's been lots of quotations from the EU in regard to Irish water and water charges. And when we, when we got into the meat of the issue, what was being said wasn't as actually what was in there in reality. And we're going, to, it's, it's going to put before our people for recommended to be enshrined in our constitution that Irish water cannot be privatised. And to me, that is what we want to ensure that Irish water re remains in public ownership. And that there's a clear commitment that that's going to be done, and that's going to be done in the very near future. That will be done in this calendar. But if the EU is dictating to you, Jackie, saying you have to have this in place and you have to have that in place, yeah? Well, I can only say what. I mean, so far the EU are dictating to us about the, the water framework. But the EU have done, a, you know, we've been caught, the EU has been quoted an awful lot in this Irish water debate, and we couldn't do this, and we couldn't do that, and we couldn't do the other thing because of the EU. We have, we have done what has been done. The government have told us was contrary to what the EU wanted. It has been done, and um, as I said, it is a clear mandate that this is going to be enshrined in our constitution. And um, you know, the constitution is the product of of, of, the, of the law, and we still are an independent state, thankfully. And when we enshrine that in our constitution, that's what will be there. And Irish water is going to stay in public ownership, and that is clear. And that is going to be done. Whatever EU directives or whatever else is there. Um, Dar Ayrton is going to give the people the opportunity to vote in a referendum to, to, to enshrine it in the constitution and I think you know that would ensure that it stays in Is that enshrine an Irish water, the utility company, into the constitution? So it would mean that Irish water, that the uh, Irish water, the utility of Irish water will stay in public ownership. Now I haven't seen the, I but haven't the, seen the, the bill. The people are saying abolish. Well, I think the people will be happy as long as this, the, the Irish water cannot be privatised. I don't think so, Jackie. I go to protests on a regular basis and 
uh, you know, there's always a good strong crowd of 80,000 plus at, at these protests and the feel that I get from the general public is that they want Irish water abolished. I think the Irish public want to ensure that it's not privatised and uh, once we have that in our constitution I think that, again the vast majority of people will be happy that the legislation has been put there to ensure that the Irish citizen is protected and that this hugely valuable resource that is water is kept in public ownership and I think that is what um, the vast majority of people that I will be talking to want to ensure that that happens, that Irish water isn't, you know, as we, we talked earlier, when we talked earlier um, about vulture funds and what's happening with vulture funds and, you know, while it, that's it, um, going off on a tangent, people are, are very unhappy with what's, the way vulture funds are treating people. We have to ensure that Irish water never goes down that route that people can be victimised by a private company and when that's enshrined in our constitution that stays in public ownership. I think that will ensure that that can't happen. If there's a general election called this year, Jackie, and the people are still saying abolish Irish water, that, that what Fianna Fáil are saying at the moment is not good enough, that we want Irish water abolished, how are Fianna Fáil going to sell their manifesto on this to the general public before the election? Well, I suppose first of all, our manifesto for the next general election hasn't been written yet, and uh, maybe the election will happen this year, maybe it won't. You know, that's what happened in the UK last week. It could happen next week, for all we know. But um, our manifesto, we will obviously take on board. We, we will sit down and parliamentary party, and you know, the policy people will sit down and see where, where, where we go to from here on Irish water. I'm happy that the commitments we made the last time round to, to, the, to divorce people who vote for us, that we have stuck to those commitments. And we will obviously gauge you know, what is best for the Irish people and our manifesto will be based on, on fairness, on fairness for all. And I suppose as a party we pride ourselves on that, that we try to have fairness to all our people. And that's what our manifesto will be. And Irish Water obviously will be part of that manifesto, but only part of it. Social housing and you know, there's a whole, a whole huge number of issues there that will dominate the next election campaign. Yes, but water has been the main issue, Jackie, that has dominated over the past uh, three years. Yeah, um, I think it will not. It won't. I think yeah. in the next hour again we'll probably get for this. I think Fianna Fáil said that they would do this and they'd do that before the the election. And up until last week, uh, Fianna Fáil were basically going with what the general public wanted. And then suddenly they did a U-turn and are back in Fianna Gael in, in, over the, the, the committee's report. I now, how can Fianna Gael hire a committee to give them a report and then once they get the report, they don't like the report, so they hire legal, a legal team to go against the committee that they hired. I, I mean, it's madness. I couldn't disagree more with you, Siobhan. Fangain clearly stated in the last general election that they were going to keep water charges. That was a core part of their election campaign that they were going to keep water charges. We had the opposite view. Here we are now um, in, the, in, in the month of April 2000, 2017, about 10 months after the formation of the government. And what we said Irish water charges would be abolished has happened. What Fine Gael said hasn't happened. So the government haven't got our way. You said you were going to abolish Irish water we have and abolished back under control of the local county council. We've abolished water charges. We're not in government. And we put it down as a key part of, of our of our of our agreement with Fine Gael to form a, to, for them to form a government was that um, it this this would have to go to a water commission and that the findings under the water commission would be accepted by Dalair and, and, and that what would come out of the Water Commission would be what would be agreed for the life of this government. We it was a core part of our of our of our agreement to support the, the when we abstained on the election of a fine year Taoiseach that this commission would be established. This commission this commission um, you know has come out with its findings and the water charges for domestic householders are no more. So I would be happy knocking any door that what we said we stuck to. And even though we're not in government, we managed to deliver the huge, the, the huge thing to Irish households that they are no longer paying for water. And I think that was a, a serious achievement for a party that's in opposition. Okay. And how do you plan on charging houses that have no meters for excessive usage charge? How is that one going to work? Well, Siobhan, um, they tell us that with these um, that they want to put um, meters in a in a in a neighbourhood, 
and that that will that will there will no there will know that um, there is excessive use in a certain set, certain part, and they will be able to trace the excessive use. Um, how that's going to work in practice, I'll be watching with interest. But I think 55% of households have have meters in the country, and I think the fact that new bills are I getting meters. that figure. <laughs> well, an awful lot of households had meters before this whole Irish water thing started. Mm. Like I personally was paying for water always. And I was on a town supply and I was always be charged for water. Were you a, so, are you a farmer? I am a farmer, yeah. Well, you were charged for water as a business, not as a, a domestic user. No, I was always, I don't use any water on my farm from the, from, the, from the domestic supply. But I was actually always charged as being a rural dreader. I was just charged Look, for water. We are charged for water through centralised taxation and through our VAT on, on car tax and, and that. And, and the public feel that we already pay for water twice over, that we're not going to pay for water a third time over. Um, that is the will of the people and that is what was a strong message that was sent to the government in the last general election. If there is another general election this year, then the water issue certainly hasn't gone away and, and you can try and dress this up and put a little bow on it, yeah, but the general public will not fall for that. Again, Shimon, I disagree totally. Um, people, when water charges are, are abolished, so I, while Irish water obviously will be discussed in the next general election campaign, I can't see it being, being uh, at the centre of the campaign because people will accept that they, they can use over 70% of the average usage and, and have no, have no um, scrutiny put on them whatsoever. And as I said, if they are using water excessively, they get the opportunity to remedy that. So in my view, the vast majority of people will be very satisfied with what has come out of this commission. And um, while it will be discussed during the election campaign, I don't think it will be a central plank of the next election like it, has, like it was in the election of 2016.